well, the passing and the successful implementation of the 2010 budget. I mean, that's really been in the spotlight with uh, just last week, the Nigerian uh, National Petroleum uh, Corporation withdrawing 50 billion naira from the financial system uh, as a cash call, some labeling it a crisis at this stage. What's your view on what's playing out here and the extent of the problem, if any? Um, well, you know, it, it, there, there have been big issues in the Nigerian budget. We saw last week, you know, the update on the budget numbers where there was a 25% revenue shortfall. And, and you know, this is very much a, a, a spillover effect of what's happened with, with the oil price through the year and then, of course, what's happened to oil production mm -hmm. locally. You know, there, there have been big problems. And we're sort of now seeing, you know, the accumulated numbers of, of you know, what was happening in the first quarter and the second quarter. But, you know, as things have gone on, I think things have improved. And, and I think there's a solid base for improvement going into, into 2010, you know, going moving from the 2009 budget mm -hmm. period to the, to the 2010 budget period. Um, you know, and uh, I, I think that as you look ahead, uh, you know, it will look okay, you know, I th because oil production is increasing. Of course, you know, the presidential health is, uh, you know, is, is coming to One the fore again. One major cloud that's just Correct. hanging over. It, it, and it stays there because of the importance that he's playing in the peace process in the Delta. And of course, the Delta peace process has been instrumental in getting the, the production up and running again. So yes, it, it, it is a very important factor to watch. I, I don't think it is a, a pivotal point in, in the progress because, you know, the reality is, you know, the current, you, you, the process can continue, you know, even if the current president remains ill for a while. Yeah. So it's unfortunately might just retard the process. Yeah. You know, and, that, and that's where, 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 the, where the concern is. Talking sits. about retarding processes, I mean, looking at uh, what that withdrawal last week possibly triggered, I mean, the interbank call rate rose sharply to 8.7%, uh, 7.5% on Wednesday from 5.75% mm. uh, on Tuesday. And some saying an indication of this reduced liquidity in the banking system, how much of a threat or challenge do you foresee that being uh, in the short term, even though prospects in the long term may be looking bright? Interbank liquidity over the last year has been very volatile at mm -hmm. times. You know, we've seen that interbank rate go up to, you know, well over 20% at times and then it drops down to 3%, you know, two weeks later. It, it, it is a very, very volatile interest rate. Um, and to some extent, it is a reflection of interbank credit perception, mm -hmm. right? And, and that is what, at least what the history is now. If we're coming into a period now where, where you're getting bad banking results, which is what we have been seeing coming through over, over the last, you know, week or two, uh, it will place a concern in the interbank market just simply yeah. because people are worried about the credit of, of where they're putting their money and that is a prime driver at times of you know of where this interbank rate goes yeah. then of course you do have the normal ebbs and flows in liquidity and 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 you do have quite big flows which go through the market which might be you know state injections into uh, the market for example there was some expectation that would be a, a federal disbursement sometime this week mm -hmm. which saw good demand in some of the treasury bills last week you know so those ebbs and flows do come through and they tend to wash out in relatively yeah. quick if i say relatively quick i mean within one to two week periods well let's bring kemi into this discussion because kemi leon has highlighted just one of the standout features within the Nigerian space over the last week, and that's been the Nigerian banking sector yet again. Just when we thought uh, we had hit the bottom, some saying it may only be now. Are you confident that uh, with these nine-month results filtering through, that the rot is now finally out of the system? Um, hi, Alicia. Um, I think to a large extent what the market has been waiting for has to, has been to see what these results would look like and I think it was um, quite good that they came out before the end of the year so that investors can start to um, I mean look at what the actual figures are and um, decide on what positions they want to take entering the 2010 entering the new year what position are you taking entering the new year specifically within the banking space and specifically pertaining to these troubled banks because we've had many suggest that these are sitting and looking pretty cheap at this stage would you be jumping in given the fact that fundamentals aren't as sound as they should be just yet um, I think quite a number of steps have to be taken before um, any investor who wants to invest in those banks will actually um, take take a position. First, you have to see exactly who would be who the new owners of these banks would be because as it as it stands now, um, we haven't seen what direction in terms of acquirers for those banks will be. It will be interesting to see who the new investors will these. Uh, for these banks would, would be and what they would be bringing into the table. Um, the CBN has said that um, the, the current management um, has a, a, an initial contract of about two years and um, 
essentially trying to prepare the banks for new owners and until we, we, we see what direction those those banks you know would take it would be difficult to decide. Many of the banks um, have said that they are currently trying to improve their internal processes, they're focusing on loan recoveries and, and they're focusing on trying to show customers as well as investors that um, the banks are currently stable and that might be um, all they can do for now. Well, we've seen Unity Bank take it a step further. It's announced that it will, in January next year, seek to raise between 60 and 70 billion naira through a combination of options, including a rights issue and a public offer as well. I mean, this is in a bid to show up its capital base before June next year. Uh, has the market at all bought into the capability of the bank to successfully do this? Um, I think... I mean, to some extent, yes, the, the, the market probably has taken that into consideration. Um, Unity Bank has a very strong Northern franchise, um, but it's, it is proper for them to um, recapitalize now because one of the th um, um, things the CBN said about them is that they are currently not adequately capitalized, and so they really have to work on that. They have come and said that they intend to raise um, their about between 60 and 70 billion um, in order to show up the capital base. In terms of whether it will be successful or not, I think um, people will look at the management um, behind the bank, people will look at the value provided position that the bank presents and then we'll be able to take a decision on whether or not it's a good investment. Kemi, uh, commentary has suggested that in order for any of the troubled banks to actually perfect its foray into the capital market at this stage of the game, a new corporate identity would need to be unveiled uh, to the public. I mean, what's your comment uh, to a strategy like that and do you see any of the banks going through rebranding phases? Um, rebranding, yes, but rebranding not just physically or aesthetically. It has to start from within. They have to actually clean up their acts, clean up their books, um, and show um, investors and customers alike that the situation is different from what used to obtain before. It's not just business as usual. There's actually been a change. Not just a change to the physical um, characteristics of the bank, but actually to their internal processes. And I think that's any, any, any one of them who can actually get that right, who can actually push that information to the public will be successful. Well, uh, let's leave it there with you. Kemi Owenobi of Fativa Capital Management, thanks so much for your time this morning. Leon, just on the currency front, looking at the Naira, uh, I mean, what are your forecasts as we head into 2010 for the local unit? Um, I'm still moderately favourably disposed to the Naira. Um, I think as we go, uh, with the market, of, of course, closes down on, on the 18th of December, mm -hmm. so there's only a few days left. Um, reopening on the 4th of January. Um, I think, you know, the, the factors I mentioned, you know, the growing uh, oil production particularly will, will help. I think over time, you know, the, the improvements in the banking sector is likely to, to help to, to invest, of course, a medium term uh, outlook. So I think we could see a, a modest appreciation in the Naira, particularly in the first half of next year, probably down to something like 140-ish, that type of area.